Hi everyone, I'm Liang, the project manager of Goldberg Go, and this is a short video demo for our game. Goldberg Go is a casual game in which the player controls a bird to fly through the forest to get coins and dodge obstacles. The game provides 5 to 10 minutes gameplay experience. The goal of the game is to get as much point as possible within the shortest time. We have 4 levels in our game, spring, summer, fall, and winter. The season is related to the story. In our original idea, Barney is the son of the season god, and he has the ability to change the season. He does not want to take up the responsibility. Instead, he wants to play and live like a normal bird. So he left his father and started his new life having fun without any worries. In a later story, Barney runs into a female bird, Rose, and she was as fast as him. So he's intrigued and decided to have a race against her. And then they get to know each other. It seems he's having a good time, yet the story took a turn at his happiest moment. After the race, Barney went back to his nest and found out that it was torn apart by other birds. It took him a long time to build the nest and it was one of his best experiences as a normal bird. As the son of a god, he's never been treated like this. He lost his temper, stole his father's full power and started raining storm upon the forest to punish the birds that destroyed his nest. In a final level, instead of Barney, the player controls the female bird, running away from the storm Barney created. Eventually, she got out of the storm, and she saw that it was the blue bird who had a great time with her created that storm, destroyed her home. The game story ends here, and we intend to tell the rest of the story if we ever get a chance to make Goldberg Go 2. That's the story of the game, now let's talk about gameplay. At the beginning, the player controls the bird with mouse only, and the bird follows the mouse wherever it points. And the camera doesn't go back, so the player knows that moving right is moving forward. During the playtest, more than one player suggested that they would prefer a keyboard controlling mechanic. So we added this controlling mechanic in the option menu, so you can switch between the mouse control and the keyboard control. The goal of the game is to collect points as much as possible, within the shortest time. We have two kinds of collectibles in our game, the speed trigger which is now the coins, and the trick spots which are now the wins you see in the game, as the basic collectible of the game. Each coin you get gives you 5 points, and also it helps increase the bird's speed. There are 3 different kinds of rings, spin, spiral, and loop, each of which makes the bird do a little trick and gives you 10 points. When it reaches maximum speed, the bird creates a shiny particle trail behind it, which looks really nice. It takes skills to maintain the maximum speed without running into obstacles, in which case the bird would slow down. When the player finishes the level, he will get a feedback of how well he did. There are four sets of time records for each level. The player would get a certain number of stars after he finished the level, and the number of the star he gets depends on how long it took him to finish the level. The shorter time you've spent finishing the level, the more stars you get. And the more stars you get, the more time bonus points you get. There are three sets of difficulty levels in our game, easy, medium, and hard. The difficulty level affects the bird's maximum speed and how much the speed falls down when the player hits the option. To get most of the coins and triggers in the level, the player needs to be either really skilled or playing in a low difficulty level. Yet, the longer you take to finish a level, the less stars you get, which means less bonus points you get. So the challenge of the game is to get as much points as possible within the shortest time, and this makes the hard mode an exciting challenge for those who want to be the best, because it requires a lot of practice for the player to put their names on the leaderboard. Besides, we have just-in-time in-game tutorials, dynamic manual, in-game pausing manual, level load function, storytelling with original artworks, and we put in a lot of effort making our game look beautiful. And that's the information about the game itself. Let's talk about our development process. What went right about our game is that we had a relatively fixed idea about exactly what we want to make at the beginning. So things went pretty smooth at the planning stage, including brainstorming, high concept document design, and designing document writing. Also, each member on our team has clear focus areas, so we have people focusing on different aspects of the game. Plus, we also believe we've scoped well. What we have right now is something enough to provide an interesting game experience, and we managed to come up with most of what we planned at the beginning. Besides, we also had a very fruitful playtest. We got tons of suggestions regarding how to improve our game, and they helped a lot during the later development process. Also, a lot of people loved our game graphics, and we did not get a lot of complaint about the game itself, which has been really encouraging for all of us. We also have a lot of things went wrong in our project. At the beginning, we had communication issues. 
size class and lab tab, we don't have any time to gather together and talk about the game development process. Because all of us have a lot of works to do and it's hard to find a time to gather everybody to sit together and communicate. We figured that out by having Google Hangout meetings during nights, and things went much more smoothly after that. During the playtest, a lot of players suggested that they had a hard time separating the obstacles and the background objects. We came up with a couple of solutions for that problem, yet none of them were implemented, either because it requires too much change on the game setting, or simply is too difficult for us to implement, and we don't have enough time for that. We tried some ways to help reduce the confusion, yet still it did not help a lot. Besides, before playtest, we had enemies in our game, yet it turns out that they failed to increase the fun of the game, and instead people who played our game suggested that the enemy breaks the game flow. So we got rid of the enemy system, which was really a lot of effort. Also, we had a plan of a nest defending mechanic at the end of level 3, and it didn't come out because it was really hard for us to make that experience interesting and engaging enough to make the game better. So we gave up on that plan. Overall, we had a really smooth development process, and each of us learned a great deal about game design, and the process helped us shape into roles for the future project. We all appreciate this experience, and we hope that we can make better games in the future.